Hey guys, it's Karina from Friendly Pantry, and I'm here today to talk about what to make for dinner with food allergies when you have no idea what to make for dinner. So basically, it's about getting inspired. Now, I'm a big fan of meal planning, and I have a whole system about how to do that and the easiest and best ways to do that with food allergies. But this is more for the times in between when you just need a break from meal planning or you just don't have the time to get it done, anything like that. So um, I wrote a blog about this and everything that I talk about today will be in that blog. So you can go to friendlypantry.com and it will be the first blog post because it's the most recent. But basically there are three steps to figuring out what to cook when you're feeling stuck. And the first one is to consider how much time you have. I mean, if you are making this for tonight and you are, um, you know, 15 minutes in between you get home from work or you pick up the kids when you have to go out or till when you have to eat, then you definitely don't want to be making a several step lasagna or something like that. So make sure that you're thinking about how much time you have. And then what you want to do is check what you've got in your pantry and in your fridge and in your freezer already. What needs to be used up? Can you find something to, to use it up with? I mean, you might see a full head of cauliflower and it might not scream to you, hey, that is dinner. But don't be afraid to just Google cauliflower recipes. Take your phone with you when you're looking in your fridge, Google it and see, is there something that inspires you there? Does it make you hungry and excited? The next thing is to look to see what's on sale. So you can do this by either going to your grocery store or you can just do it online and you can figure out what you think um, looks good there. So if there's chicken thighs on, on sale, maybe that's where you start. Maybe it's like, okay, well, how can I flavor those chicken thighs? And as for those people who have multiple food allergies or who want to decrease the amount of label reading because they're feeling anxiety when they go to the store and grocery shopping, I want you for this thing to just stay right out of the main area of the grocery store and focus just on the produce and the meat section because you don't want to be reading labels right now. You want to feel inspired. You want to feel ready to cook and excited. And to do that, you just want to kind of get all of that anxiety, keep that out of this. So to inspire you, we'll look at the produce section and we want to think about some sort of common flavor pairing ideas. So these are things that are tried and true that chefs have used over and over and they do that because they work and they're delicious. So some common uh, produce flavor pairings might be tomato and basil or tomato and cilantro, potato and rosemary, potato and garlic, mushrooms and garlic. Or some pairings like beef and rosemary or beef and salt and pepper or chicken and lemon or chicken and apricots. So as you can see, there's some commonalities. These are all really delicious flavors that you probably have tasted before. Um, but by just making them in a new way, they're going to be delicious again. So those are the three steps, but I want to make a little note here that's really important about probably this whole time you're thinking, well, is my family going to eat this meal? And yes, that's really important to consider, but I want you to kind of think of that last instead of first, because if you're thinking about it first, you are likely to kind of get yourself into a box and make yourself think, oh, you know what, they're not gonna eat that, so I'm not even gonna think of that. And it really stifles your creativity. So I want you to think about whether they will eat it, but don't force yourself into that box. If there's something new that looks exciting and neat, try it. Give it a try because you never know if your kids are actually gonna love it. They just might surprise you. So expanding the horizons is a good thing. We are already so limited because of our food allergy choices that let's try and just try as many new things as we can while we can. So that's it. I hope this has been helpful for you. Let me know if you think it was. I'd love to hear from you. And head to friendlypantry.com for the blog where everything is written down. Thanks for listening and bye for now.